<laughs> Good. And is it Sham or Sham? Yeah, teacher. Hi. How are you? Fine, I'm good. And you? I'm good. And how's Sarah? The... Oh, go ahead. The baby, how's the baby? Baby's good. He's been <laughs> kicking for about an hour. <laughs> so. He's playing. Yeah, he is. So it's okay. We'll let him. <laughs> and Sarah, how are you? Hi. Welcome back. And Muhammad, how are you? Hi, I am doing fine. And you, my teacher? I'm good. I'm good. And is it uh, Lakurgo? Am I saying that right? Or Lakurgo? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ernesto? <laughs> Back. Johnny, how are you? Welcome back. Hi, Shanae. I'm great. Nice to okay. see you again. Nice to see you too. I'm very happy today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kita, how are you? Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And Ahmed, how are you? I'm um, fine. Thank you. Good. Good, good. Um, Likurgo, are you there? Yeah. Ah, there you are. Am I saying your name right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. How are you? I'm good. Good. Good, good. All right, guys. <clears throat> well, welcome to class, everyone. Uh, my name is Shanae, and I'm from the United States, and I live in California. And it's hot outside, and it's beautiful. <laughs> so we talked a lot last class about weather, and um, everyone I think knows that uh, I love hot weather. So come to Fortaleza. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. I'm not allowed to get on a plane though anymore because of the baby. So I'm gonna have to wait. But that's okay. So, um, anyways, so today, guys, we are going to be reading a short story called The Wine Press. The Wine Press. And uh, hopefully, you'll pick up some new vocabulary as well as um, we're going to work on reading comprehension. So, it should be a good, fun class. I'm excited to read this story. So,. It's about something that I can't have at the moment, which is wine. So um, it should be fun. Um, let's go. No, Johnny, you do not want to live here. Um, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's my child dream. No. <laughs> no, no. Brazil is much more beautiful. California. Oh, I don't agree with you. Oh yes, I promise. Um, California is. You know, people are kind of rude here, so people aren't very friendly. Um, where I'm from, Arizona, people are a lot friendlier, so. I hope to live in Los Angeles. I don't know. It's oh, no, you I don't. No, 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 no. Why not? <laughs> no. Oh, you are ruining no. my brain. <laughs> no, L.A. is, oh, ugh. Too many people, a lot of crime. There's a lot of crime in LA. A ah, lot. But it's happened in everywhere. I, I don't worry about this. Oh, there's a lot of crime in LA. A lot. Every single day on the news, it's terrible. It's terrible. And it's crowded. And it's smoggy. And <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. No, oh, there's yeah. like. Out like some of the outskirts of LA, like Pasadena, um, Pomona, um, those places are nice. But like actually, like to live in Los Angeles, you don't want to do that. No, 
So really? there's a beautiful there's a beautiful city. My husband's actually there right now. Um, about I don't know, maybe thirty minutes from LA, called Yorba Linda. Yorba Linda is really pretty. But uh, yeah. what about your city? There's you don't there's nothing here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> really? <laughs> I live in a really I live in Ukaipa. I live in a very 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 small town. <laughs> so I'm about I'm about an hour and a half from LA. So I, let's put it this way: I would rather live here than LA. Yeah, the boonies. Exactly. I do. I totally live in the boonies. So um, I would rather live here than in LA. So where I live is very safe. There's very little crime. Um, we have beautiful mountains. Um, I, I like where I live, but you yeah, don't want to go to LA. Talk about a violence. I don't worry about this because I live in Sao Paulo, so we have crime uh, every day. So you know, it's the same uh, there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So the cops here lately. Uh, well, not where I live, but in LA, like. They just like shoot people. Yesterday on the news, they had a deal where they shot this guy who stole a bicycle. Wow. Well. So, yeah, they're like we we have a name for that. It's called trigger happy. The cops in LA are very trigger happy. <laughs> they're not nice. So I don't like LA. LA is great to visit, but not to live. And uh, uh, trigger happy it's uh, someone who uh, I don't know I don't know uh, stole uh, small things small objectives yeah. Tr trigger happy That's is it. is trigger happy is somebody who will shoot somebody very quickly without really asking any questions. Oh, I know. So <laughs> the, yeah, so the cops here are very trigger happy, which, you know, in their defense, because of all the crime and all of the bad people that live in L.A., you know, I'm sure it's hard for them because, I mean, it's a really difficult job to be a police officer. Um, but at the same time, like I said, they kind of, like, shoot first and then – ask questions later. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I see. Yeah. But, like I said, you, out, like, you're outside just of me right LA, now. <laughs> outside, I, I know, you don't want to live in LA. Um, <laughs> out, outside of LA is pretty. There's some really pretty places outside of LA. But actually, like, the heart of the city, it's gross. It's, okay. yeah, my city, my city, Sofian, is like Winesburg. It is. It is. So, um, oh, Fabiana. <laughs> Always wait. <laughs> I know, Fabiana. You have to be faster. So, anyways, um, we're going to, today our, our reading is going to take us to France. So, we're going to read about France. Does anybody here speak French? No. I'm yes. yes. I speak so, French. Yes. Sophia, and you do? Okay. Um, there's a couple of French words in this story. We might need your help. Okay. So, um, so let's have everyone introduce themselves, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So, Ahmed, let's have you start for us. Okay, where is the, uh, where is the link? Or, uh, Just the... tell us where you're from and oh, okay, okay. something about okay. yourself. Okay, I am uh, Ahmed al I am from Egypt. Uh, I am uh, 31. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer and studying uh, business administration now. Um, so, you know, business is uh, related to English in these uh, days. So I have to practice uh, my little English uh, and improve it. Uh, so I Google uh, how I can uh, improve my English with the native. And uh, and I'm here now. <laughs> awesome! Very good. <laughs> yeah, thank Very you. good. Excellent. Perfect. Thank and uh, Kita. Yeah. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Am I here? Yeah. I'm from, I'm from Japan. Um, why I'm studying English? Yeah, I started teaching Japanese. So I need to explain about Japanese to students. 
So I want to improve my um, pronunciation. A teaching uh, Japanese, maybe um, English pronunciation is very important. Excellent. Where Where do you live in Japan? I I'm living in Osaka. Do you know the second largest city in, in Japan? Okay. Okay. My my brother um, spent quite a bit of time in Japan, so. Very cool. And you teach English, you teach Americans Japanese there? Uh, no, I have uh, uh, Nepalese or other um, South American people. Ah, wonderful. That's so cool. Very nice. Awesome. Welcome. And uh, Johnny? Okay. Uh, my name is Johnny. I'm from Brazil. I live in Sao Paulo. It's a violent city as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Johnny, stop that, I, uh, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I am 18 years old and I'm here to improve my English skills because I hope to live in California <laughs> someday <laughs> and, you know, I need to be fluent to, to move in another country for speaking English. All right, very good. And uh, Likurgo. Likurgo. Where'd you go? Oh, I'm here. There you are. Sorry, but <laughs> I'm going to be slow. No worries. Yeah. Where, where are you My from? My name is Nicole. I'm from Dominican Republic. Um, I'm from Dominican Republic. I want to improve my English because um, someday I would like to work in New York. I'm studying now medicines, and in the future I would like to work over there. Awesome. Very good. And Muhammad? Hi. Hello. Hello. My name is Muhammad Isa'a. Uh, I'm 24 years old. I'm from Egypt. I live in Mansoura City. I'm working in Egyptian Ambulance Organization as a paramedic. I speak... Oh. Yes. I speak a little English, so I'm studying English uh, right now to improve my language. I think that's all. Wonderful, very good. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Mustafa? Yeah, hi, Shine. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. You want to introduce yourself, Mustafa? Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you cut out. Are you there, Mustafa? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Can you, you hear me? Uh, yeah, you cut out. Mm, okay, what now? It's better? I think so, maybe. So, can you hear me or uh -huh. still yeah. cut? Yep, we're good. Yeah, so hi, everybody. I'm from Holland. Nice to see you. Oh, you cut out again. That's okay. Mustafa lives in Iraq, I believe. So, um, Sarah? Yes? Your turn. Um, I'm Sarah. I study English, and uh, I'm from Oman, but I live in Saudi Arabia. All right. Very good. And Snoopy? Yeah, I'm from Brazil, like Johnny. We also have problems here, but I prefer to enjoy <laughs> the beautiful sunny and hot weather. <laughs> yes, yes, Snoopy, yes. Awesome. Okay. What's your real name, Snoopy? Oh, it's a secret. I can oh. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Are you a spy? No, I'm just no. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Did you saw the link that I I. I wrote in the chat in the beginning? I did. The one from Dropbox? Yes. That one? Uh-huh. Did you make that? 
Uh, there's a site that do that. I did this for you. Maybe you can use in the video call. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You can mix your video image with that image. Okay. I'll do my best. I'm not very, you know, I'm not very good with technology, but I'll try. So. If, if you want to know how to, I can explain. Okay. Awesome. Very good. And, uh, Sofian? Hello everyone, my name is Safian. I'm from Algeria and I'm 18 years old. 18 years old. <laughs> That's all. Alright. And Fabiana! Yay! <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. A little older, but okay. <laughs> Should I present me? Yes, please. Okay, my name is Fabiana. Now I am 35 years old. I'm from Brazil, like some other guys here. And I'm here to improve my English. All right. Awesome. Very okay, good. Fabiana, which city? And What's your city, Fabiana? I, I'm from Santa Catarina, but I live in Sao Paulo. Nice. OK. All right. Awesome, guys. All right, so we're going to be reading this story. Um, I'll give you the link, but I'll also screen share it. <coughs> so there's the link. And like I said, this is called the Wine Press. And I guess um, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And control plus. All right. So Ahmed, if you could read the first two okay. paragraphs for me. Okay. Um, the uh, the wine press by Joseph by Joseph uh, Berger. Uh, you don't have to be French to enjoy a decent red wine. Charles Joslin de Grasse used to tell his foreign guests whenever he, en he, enter he entertained them in Paris, but you, do but you do have to be French to recognize one. He would add with a laugh. After a lifetime in the French diplomatic corps, the Count de Grasse lived with his wife in an elegant townhouse on uh, Coya Volatere. He was a like he, uh, he was a likable likable man. He was a likable man, uh, cultivated uh, of course, with a well deserved uh, reputation as a generous host and an amusing uh, raconteur. Raccoon Raconteur. Raconteur. Uh huh. Raconteur. Yeah, Raconteur. Raconteur. Good. All right. So um, here we have uh, Charles, um, Sofian. Am I saying? How do I say this? Jocelyn. Well, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. De Grus. Yeah. De Grus. De De Grus. Yeah. I do not. I do not speak French clearly. <laughs> um, so, um, and he is saying that. Anybody can enjoy a decent red wine, but you have to be what in order to recognize a good red wine? A French. French. Yeah, but French. you have to be French. And he spent um, his his life, his work was in the French diplomatic corps, and now he lives with who? In a townhouse. His wife. His wife, uh huh, and he likes to entertain, and people like him a lot. He is very good at being a host, and he is also quite amusing as a host. So, uh, Fabiana, can you read uh, the next four paragraphs for me? Okay. So until uh, yes, general bags, uh huh. Okay. Okay. This evening's guests were all European and all equally convinced that immigration was at the root of Europe's problems. Charles de Grus said nothing. 
he had always concealed his contempt for such ideas, and in any case, he had never much cared for these particular guests. The, the first of the Red Bordeaux was being served with the veil, and one of the guests turned to the grooves. Come on, Charles, it's simple arithmetic, nothing to do with race or color. You must have had bags of experience of this sort of thing. What, what did you say? Yes, General, bags. Yeah, all right. So, everybody who is at uh, Mr. De Gru or Count de Grus's house is all from Europe and they are having a discussion about what? Immigration. Immigration. And the people, uh, all of the guests believe what about immigration? That they are Europe's problems. Mm hmm. How does De Groos feel about this? He said nothing. Why? Why does he say nothing? Does he agree or disagree? He had never much cared for these particular guests. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't really like these people, but there's a reason. It says he had always concealed his contempt for such ideas. Anybody know what that means? What do you think it means? He's not, he's not interested in this conversation? Yes and no. He's not really interested in the conversation, but not because he doesn't care. He actually cares a great deal. But why? What do you think the word contempt means? If he doesn't really like the people that he's having over, and he's not saying anything, how do you think he feels about the idea that immigration is causing Europe's problems? Maybe it is not important for him? No, it is. It is important. Mm. Basically what this means, if he if he's concealed, does everybody know what conceal means? No. Hide. If you, yes, no. good, yes. If you conceal something, it means you are hiding it. He's always hid his contempt. Contempt of another a synonym for whoops, a synonym for contempt would be kind just of idea. Idea what? Feeling. Um contempt is a feeling, yes. Um, a synonym for it would be disdain, dislike, hate. So he has always hid the fact that he does not agree with this idea that immigration is causing Europe's problem. He doesn't let anybody know that, um, which I think all of us can kind of relate to because everybody has opinions about all different kinds of things. And if you're talking with a bunch of people that have a different idea, on something than you do. It's really hard to come out and say, I disagree, if you're the only person. So he is, yeah, it's, it's hard to do that. So instead of him coming out and saying, I don't agree with you guys, I don't think that immigration is the cause of Europe's problems, he just kind of keeps his mouth shut about it. But secretly, inside, he doesn't like the conversation that they're having. He doesn't like the ideas that they have. And one of his guests speaks up and says, you know, come on, Charles, it's simple arithmetic, nothing to do with race or color. You must have had bags of experience on this sort of thing. What do you say? And he just chooses to agree with him at this point and say, yes, General Bags, meaning to say, yes, in my line of work, I have had a lot of experience with this. But he's still, he's trying to keep the peace, so to speak. He's, he's not trying to cause an argument. Um, after all, these are his guests in his home. And nothing would show, you know, he wouldn't be the likable host if he was to tell them all that, you know, he disagrees. Does that make sense? 
Yes. yes. Does anybody yes. have any questions? No. No? no. Oops. Okay. Um, hey, Dr. Serene. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Good. What about you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, can I have you do some reading for me? Where, teacher? Um, if you could start with without another word and then read until the vigorous claret. So the next four paragraphs. Okay. Without another word, the Groose picked up his glass and introduced uh, his bulbous whiny nose. After a moment, sorry. Okay. Uh, after a moment, he looked up with watery eyes. A truly full body is uh, Bordeaux, he said warmly, a wine among wines. The four guests held their glasses to the light and studied their blood uh, blood dread contents they all agreed that it was the best wine they had ever tasted one by one the little uh, white lights along the sign were coming on and from the first floor windows you could see the brightly lit uh, botox motors passing through the arches of the pont du cruz Carousel. The party moved on to a dish of game served with a more vigorous claret. Good. Can you? Im okay. Good. Uh, say that again, Dr. Serene. Did you have a question? What? Did no. you have a question? No? Okay. No. All right. So basically, what they're doing is it, this is a wine tasting party. Um, De Cruz, De Cruz is bringing out all these different wines that are paired with different kinds of meals. And the first one is what kind of wine? A Bordeaux? A Bordeaux, yes. The most famous of wines to come from France. And bulbous, good question Snoopy, bulbous basically means um, large. Larger, over, um, oversized, I guess, would be a good way to put it, oversized. Um, well, it's the, the, he's actually talking about his nose. <laughs> so he has a bulbous nose. He has a big nose that, and, it's, and it says whiny because he can, he can smell wines very well. Like an onion? Um, Teacher, yeah, it's shape. It's like an onion. That I'm not sure. To be quite honest, let's see. A potato is better. You guys are funny. Um, I'm checking for you guys. Yeah, I guess you, yeah, I, it could be anything that grows from a bulb. Does everybody know what a bulb is? Like flowers grow from bulbs, onions grow from bulbs. Um, I don't know if potatoes grow from bulbs. But it's, 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 it's bulging, it's big. So he has a big nose that's round. You definitely, it, it, bulbs are always round, so if it's a bulbous nose, it's a big round nose. It's not pointy, it's round, like a bulb, like a bulb, so. As I can imagine. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So he's got this big nose that he's like sniffing the, <laughs> sniffing the wine, for, <laughs> sniffing the wine out of the glasses, exactly. So, um, and, uh. Now all the, the rest of the guests are also looking at their wine glasses and all saying that, you know, this is fabulous, fabulous wine. It says, one by one, the little white lights along the sign were coming on. What time of day is this? Uh, 
If the lights are coming on along the river sign, what time of day is it? Night? Yeah, it's becoming night. It's evening. It's early evening. Exactly. So from this point, as, it's, as night is falling, now they are moving on to a dish of game. Anybody know what, a di what that means, dish of game? Mm -hmm. What is game? Is it like when we play Jeopardy in class? What's a dish of game? Game is things like deer, bear, antelope, wild animals that you hunt to eat is game. A lot of times people call it big game. So it's not like cow or pig. It's not like beef or pork um, or chicken. It's something that you go out to actually hunt to eat, not something that you raise on a farm to eat. That's what game is. Yeah, deer. Deer meat is called venison, by the way. So just to confuse you even more, deer meat is called <laughs> venison. Why? I don't know why, but it is. Um, and now they are serving with the with the game. What kind of wine are they drinking with the game? Are they still drinking Bordeaux? The claret, I guess. Yeah, claret. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, they're drinking a claret. Yep, a claret wine, which is another type of red wine. So. I'm sorry, but uh, uh -huh. claret. Claret, uh huh. What does it mean? It's a type of wine. Oh. Okay. Like Bordeaux is a type of wine, Cabernet is a type, Claret is a type of wine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. Kita, can I have you read one, two, three, four? The next six paragraphs. So until said the other politician. Okay. Can you imagine? Ask the crews. Uh, the crowd was poured. Uh, that uh, there are pre people who actually serve uh, wines. They know uh, nothing about. Really, said one of the guests, a German politician. Personally, before I uncork a bottle, I like to know what's what's in it. But how how can anyone be uh, sure? I like to hunt around the uh, vineyard. Take this place I used to uh, visit in Bordeaux. I got to know the wine grower there personally. That uh, that's a way to know what you are drinking. A matter of pedigree, Charles, said the other, other politician. Good, very good. So, De Cruz, or De Cruz, um, he is asking this question. Can you imagine that there are people who actually serve wines they know nothing about? So he believes that if you're going to serve somebody wine, you better know all about it. In fact, he says, before I uncork a bottle, I like to know what's in it. What do you think that means, to uncork a bottle? Open the to remove bottle. the cover. Yeah, to open the, co yeah, open, open the bottle, exactly. And one of his guests is kind of baffled by this. He's like, well, how do you know? You know, if you've never opened the bottle, how do you know? What's his answer? What, is, what does De Gruz do in order to figure out what kind of wine he's drinking? And he likes to know what is in the bottle before drinking it. Uh huh. How does he figure out what's in the bottle before drinking it? Hunt around the 
vineyard? Yeah. Yeah, he goes and visits the vineyards. So, yeah. so instead of just going to the store and buying a bottle of wine, he actually goes to where they make the wine to the vineyards, talks to the the person who the 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 I don't know what they're called. But Collect talks, them. Yeah. Talk, yeah, talks to the guy who makes the wine. <laughs> the wine grower. There we go. Talks to the wine grower, and that's how he figures out about the wine. And the other guy says it's a matter of pedigree. What is pedigree? If I say you have a good pedigree, what am I saying? Like from a good family or, or good ancestors. Exactly, exactly. So what he's looking for is wine, excuse me, that comes from a good pedigree. He's looking for wine that comes from good vineyards. That's being decent. Decent, yeah, that's being made by good people. That's I what he's it. looking for. Does anybody here drink wine? I drink. Do you like red or white, Fabiana? I like red and white wine. You like both? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like red like wine. <laughs> I like red wine. My my favorite wine is a Shiraz. It's a Shiraz wine. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's not too sweet, but it's not too bitter either. Um. Johnny. Yes. Uh, let's okay. have you let's have you read until she said. Okay. This fellow continued the growth has thought the Dutchman had not spoken. Always gave you the story behind his wines. One of these was the most extra extraordinary story. I have heard we are tasting at his winery and we came to cask that made him frown. He asked me if I agreed with him that he had bored ox was the best wine in the world. Of course I agreed. Then we made the string statement. The wine in this cask, he said, and there were tears in his eyes. Is the best vintage in the world, but it started its life far from the country where it was grown. The grocery paused to check this, that his question were began served. Well, said the Dutchman, the grocery and his wife exchanged glances. Do tell them, Mon Cherie, <laughs> she said. Mon Cherie, yeah, Mon Cherie. Yes. Yeah, so it means my dear, right, Sofian? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Monchari. Monchari. Yeah. Monchari. <laughs> Whatever. Monchari, yeah. See, my name is French. Name I Jordan, but we won't go there. Um, that's about all the French I know. That and bonjour. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so he's telling this story about when he was up at this winery, at this vineyard, visiting this guy. And... The wine grower asks Mr. De Cruz if he believes that Bordeaux is the best wine in the world. And De Cruz says, of course it is. And he points to a cask. Anybody know what a cask is? A barrel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a wine barrel. A cask is one of those big oak barrels that they, that they make the wine in. Wooden. Yep, wooden. Uh-huh. So they are at this cask, and the guy starts talking about the wine that's in the cask. What's special about the wine that's in the cask that they're standing at? It started its life. Far from the country where it was grown? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So even though they're I'm um, in France where you know France is known to have the best wines, 
the wine that he is making, did it come from France? No. No, it didn't. It didn't. So this is kind of a <gasps> aha moment for De Gruz. <laughs> so, and his wife um, is, he, he pauses after he mentions that, and his guests obviously are very intrigued. And his wife tells him to continue. Um, Muhammad. Yeah, I'm he. Let me have you read. Uh oh, I'm starting to I think so. From uh, Alex. Um, hold on one second. <coughs> okay, I can read. At the age of 21, Barry, that was the name he gives a uh, one grower. Oh, start, start the one right above that, Muhammad. What? Uh, start with Dick Ruse. Dick Ruse, lean forward. Yeah. Uh, Dick Ruse learned forward, uh, took another sip of wine, and dubbed his... Uh, uh, I can say, please, uh, you can... Uh, Scroll the page down. Um, it should all be there. Okay, this is a story he <coughs> told. At the age of 21, Barry, that was the name he gave the wine grower, he had sent by his father to spend some time with his uncle in Madagascar. Within two weeks, he had fallen for a local girl, uh, uh, call it uh, Finn or Desiree, in, Malag in Malagasy. You couldn't palm him. At 17, she was refreshing uh, in, in the chicks. Farm at large, uh, Fasmo's eyes, it was a genuine cop uh, D4D for both of them. Within five months, they were married. Fernie had no family, but Bear's parents come uh, out uh, from France for the wedding. Even though they didn't uh, strictly approve of it. And for three years, the young couples lived very happily of the island of uh, Madagascar. Then one day, a telegram came from France. Bears Brantis and his only brothers uh, had been called in a car crash. Barry took the, the next uh, flight home to attend uh, the funeral and uh, manage the and manage the vineyard uh, left by his father. Good. All right. All right. So my <clears throat> allergies all of a sudden just decided to explode. So when Pierre was 21, and who is Pierre, by the way? The guy uh, who is uh, the wine the, grower. Uh, Yeah, the wine grower. And he was sent from France to go where? To Madagascar. Madagascar. Uh huh. Yeah. What happened while he was in Madagascar? He had fallen for a local girl. Yeah, he fell in love. He fell in love. How old was she? Seventeen. Seventeen. And uh, what? Did they decide to do? Get married. Get married. Yep, they they got married, and uh, Pierre's parents came from France for the wedding. And um, how long did they live in Madagascar? Three years. Then what happened? He had telegram, came from France. It says that his parents and his brother died. Were killed. 
Yeah, they died in a car crash. And um, so once once that happened, where what happened to Pierre? He went back to yeah to he went back to attend the funeral. Uh huh. And uh, what else? And manage yeah and manage the vineyard. Yep. So he had to go home to bury his parents as well as take over the family business. Yeah. Um. Um, let's see, uh, Sarah, can you read um, yes. the next three paragraphs for me? Um, start from where? From Fannery. Fannery. Where should I stop? Um, from Fannery, followed two weeks later. Okay. Two weeks later. Um, Fannery. Fan, what was the first name? Fannery. Fannery Fen, followed two weeks later. Uh, Fuller uh, was uh, grilled. Str what's Stricken. The word? Stricken. Stricken. But with uh, Fannery, she uh, still uh, st uh, still Settle. down settled down to running the vineyard, uh, his family, and the lazy, idyllic days under a tropical sun, sun were gone forever, but he was very happily married and he was very well off. Perhaps he uh, resigned life in uh, Bordex would not uh, be so, sa was so bad, but uh, he was wrong. It soon became uh, uh, off up. Uh, Apfelos, uh, that family was jealous. In um, in Madagascar, uh, she had no match. Uh, in France, she was jealous of everyone, of the uh, maids, of the secretary, uh, even uh, of the peasant girls uh, who picked the grabs and uh, giggled at her funny accent. She convinced herself that Pera made love to each of them in turn. She started with the... Uh, I don't know what this word... Insinuations. Insini uh, insinuations. Simple articles, uh, one that Pera hardly even recognized. She, uh, then she tr uh, tried blunt uh, acc accusation in the brilliant privacy of their bedroom when he didn't let that she resort, re, resorted to violent, uh, hum, humiliating, uh, oh, I don't know what this Denouncements? Denouncement in, uh, in the kitchens, uh, the winery, the plantations, the angel that Peter had married in Madagascar had become a trim, a trim, a trim gent. Termigant, termigant, a trim gent, blinded by jealousy. Nothing he did or said could help. Often she would refuse to speak or uh, uh, for a week or more, and when at least she uh, she spoke she spoke, it would uh, only be to scream yet more ab uh, abuse uh, or swear again her intention to leave him. By the third minute, uh, her first it was obvious to everyone that uh, they uh, loved each other. Good. All right. So. A lot of difficult words. <laughs> That's okay. So two weeks after Pierre went home to Bordeaux, Fannery followed. And even though he knew that it was life was going to be different, he thought that it would be okay because he was very happily married. But what started happening? Fannery became jealous. Yeah, she becomes this crazy person. So she becomes very jealous of everyone. She becomes jealous of who? Name some for me. 
the maids, the secretary, even secretary? of the people. Yeah, Girls. the maids, the secretary, and who else? Peasant the girls. Peasant girls. Yeah, and the peasant girls. And in fact, she is so jealous of them that she convinced herself that Pierre was doing what? He was he doing wrong to each one of each other. Yeah, he, she convinces herself that her husband is cheating on her, that yes. her husband is having affairs with all of these women. And so she starts to make insinuations. Insinuations is like things like, where were you, you know, for five minutes, you know? And she starts making all these crazy um, accusations to her husband of, you know, what he's been doing. And um, she does it in the bedroom. She does it in the kitchen. She does it pretty much everywhere that she possibly can. Mm -hmm. So she's changed a lot from when Pierre met her. And how long did it take before they hated each other? Maybe three we? vine harvests. Three, yes. yeah, three yeah. vine harvests. So. Three times they harvested, the, after the third time of harvesting the grapes, Pierre's had enough of her, and she obviously has had enough of Pierre. Does it mean three years? Say that again? Does it mean three years? Um, I think they harvest twice a year, but I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I think. Okay, okay. Um, Sofiane, would you like to read the next um, four paragraphs for me. Okay. On Friday evening, Pierre was down in the winery working on a new electric wine press. He was alone. The grape pickers had left. Suddenly, the door opened and Fenry entered excessively made up. She walked straight up to Pierre, flung her arms around his neck and pressed herself against him. Even above the fumes from the pressed grape, he could smell that she had been drinking. Darling, she sighed, what shall we do? He badly wanted her, but all the past, the salts and humiliating scenes well, welled up inside him. He pushed her away. But darling, I'm going to have to have a baby. Don't be absurd. Go to bed, you're drunk, and take the paint off. It makes you look like a tart. All right, so Pierre is down in the winery, and he's working on what? New electric wine press. Wine press. Yeah, what's a wine press? Anybody know? Mm -mm. A machine that makes wine. Yeah, exactly. It's the machine that presses the grapes to make the juice to make the wine. And his wife comes in. And she's got tons of makeup on, and she's all dolled up. And what's wrong with her? She was drunk. She's drunk. And she's trying to get Pierre to sleep with her. And, in fact, she goes as far as to say she's going to have a baby. That's wonderful. You're going to have a baby, and you've been drinking. That's just great. <laughs> um <laughs> Um, so, but does he, does he fall into her trap, so to speak? No. No. No, in fact, he <clears throat> tells her to take her makeup off, that she looks like a tart. What's a tart? I don't know. A retard? No. Like a cake. Beautiful food. It is like a cake, but this is meant in a different way. Is it a pie? No. It has like no a whore? This has Something nothing. Bad. Yeah, like a whore. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Fabiana. Yeah, she looks like a slut. Um, he's saying that she looks like a like a prostitute, like a, one of the women who wears a lot of makeup and is just out for sex. So he's not impressed by what she is trying to um, accomplish here. 
Um, Ahmed, you're back up. If you want to read the next three paragraphs for me. Okay. Okay. Um, Fenris face blackened, blackened, and she th and she throw herself at him with new uh, acquisitions. Uh, he had never cared for her. He cared only about sex. He was obsessed with it and with white women. But the women in France, the white women, they were the the uh, tarts, and he was welcome to them. She snatched a knife from the wall and lunged at him with it. She was in tears, but it but it took uh, but it took all his strength to keep the knife from his from his throat. Eventually, he pushed her off, and she stumbled. She stumbled towards the wine press. Fury stood, uh, breathing heavily, as the screw of the press cut at her hair and dragged her in. She screamed, struggling to free her uh, to free herself. The screw bit slowly into her shoulder, and she screamed again. Then she fainted, through wither from the pain or the fumes. He was not sure. He looked away until a, a seeking seeking sound told him it was over. Uh, then he raised his arm and switched the current off. Uh, proceed? Yeah, go ahead and read two more paragraphs for me. Okay. Uh, the guest is uh, shuddered uh, visibly, and the D. Grace paused in his story. Uh, well, I will not, I won't go into the details at table, he said. Fury fit the rest of the body into into the press and tied it up. Then he went up to the house, had a bath, uh, ate a meal, and went to bed. The next day, he told everyone Fenry had finally left him, uh, had finally left him and gone back to Madrashtar. No one was surprised. He paused again. His guests sat. Uh, motionless, their eyes turned towards him. Of course, he continued. 65 was a bad year for red verdicts, except oh. for except for Pires, that was the extraordinary thing. It won a word after a word, and nobody could understand why. The general general's wife cleared her throat, but surely she said, you didn't taste it. No, oh, I good. didn't. Okay, okay. Let's, let's stop there for a second. All right, so, oh my gosh. So, what happened? Oh, I, uh, <laughs> I just read <laughs> What happened? Well, the wife wants to call her to go Pierre. Is, say that again? I think the wife wants to call Pierre. She did. She tried to kill Pierre, but what ended up happening? Mm -hmm. he, he killed her. Yeah, he did. He accidentally killed her. Accidentally killed her, yeah. So she grabs a knife from the wall, comes at him, tries to slit his throat, and when he pushes her off, her hair gets caught in the wine press and pulls her head. It crushes her. Oops. It crushes her, just like it does a grape. Just crushed her. And he puts her whole body into the wine. Mm -hmm. Ew. 
The secret of the of the award. Yeah, the secret of why the wine is so good is because <laughs> Finnery is in the wine. Finnery is actually in the wine. So um, let's uh, let's finish this off. Obviously, his guests are disgusted. Um, other Ahmed, would you like to finish this off for us? Where did we stop? Uh, the general's wife cleared her throat. The general's wife cleared her throat, but surely she said you didn't taste it. No, I didn't taste it, though Pierre did assure me this wife had lent the wine in an incom incomparable aroma. And you didn't err by anything, asked her, asked the general. How did I refuse? It is in very day that one finds such a pedigree. There was a long silence. The Dutch man shifted awkwardly in his seat. His glass paused midway between the table and his open lips. The other guests looked around and easily at each other. They did not understand. But look here, Cruz, said the general at last. You don't mean to tell me we're drinking this damned woman now, do you? De Cruz gazed impassively at the Englishman. Heaven forbid, General, he said slowly. Everyone knows that the best vintage should always come first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so are they drinking the woman? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. And why do you think he decided to do this? If Take you... revenge? Yeah, take revenge. Why? Because the way they spoke about immigrants. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, I gave you guys the link to this. <coughs> there is, um, hold on one second. There is a uh, comprehension and vocabulary quiz that you can take from that link that go along with the story. We're out of time for now, and I'm dying apparently.